miscellaneous settings are the settings that you should probably know how to use and use quite a bit, but a lot of people just have no idea what they do and they're incredibly helpful to understand. So let's go over them. Culling is the first thing. This is a performance setting. It's used to control what renders and what does not. So by default, it's set to cull back, which makes it so that any normals facing away from the camera are not being rendered. So if you look at this, it looks normal. But if you go inside it, you don't see anything. And that's because the normals of the sphere point outwards. And when you're inside, they are facing away from the camera. So you can change this if you want to make it front side only. And then now you're only seeing the inside. So if I go inside, I see the sphere. But if I'm outside, I can still only see the inside of the sphere. So if I switch that to off, now it is rendering everything. It's not culling anything. So you can see the outside and the inside. And that's how culling works. By default, you should have it at back. If you need to turn it off, you should. But if you can leave it on back, that's best, as it is the most performant. Z-test is how something knows whether it's in front of or behind something. So by default, it's set to less equal, and that means that things closer or equal to something else will render. So this wall is closer than the sphere, so the wall is being rendered. If I go into the sphere and say, I want you to only render if you are greater than or equal, then you'll see that the bottom of the sphere is rendering because it's further away than the wall. And if I turn it off or I turn it to always, it will always render whether it's closer or further away than something else. And the other options are kind of just variants of those. If you want to look into this more, the Unity documentation covers all of this. Blending is used for transparent objects, and they control how things blend with things behind them. You can go to the Unity Blend documentation and get all of the most common blending settings if you want to just copy those. I'll show you a few of them here. So this is a transparent object. You can tell it by lowering the transparency. By default, it's going to kind of just fade out. And that may not be what you want. So if you're going for something that's glassy, you would want to pull up the documentation. And glass is multiplicative. So you want, the, you want it to be destination color and then zero. So go over here. You want the source blend to be destination color. And you want the destination to be zero. And now you're multiplying with the background behind you. And if you wanted to be additive, for example, you can set this to 1, 1. And now you will actually just add to the background behind you. So if you got darker, or if, you were, if your color was darker, it would add less. So you can kind of control transparency with how black or white you are. This is good for stuff if you want to, like, add shine or just increase the brightness of something. Z-Write controls whether you're writing to the Z-Buffer or not. So the way you tell if an object is in front of or behind something else is with the Z-Buffer. So every object that renders writes how close it is to the camera and whatever object sort of wins in what's closer or not closer is rendered. So say for example I have this sphere and I have an object behind it. Now, because the sphere is closer to the camera, even though the sphere is transparent, I can't see that object behind it because the sphere in front is writing to the Z buffer. So it sees this and says, hey, this is in front of this, so why would I ever render this? And to fix that, all you need to do is select this transparent one and turn Z right off. Now, this causes other issues, obviously, and that is because this is rendering in the wrong queue. So you can see this is actually the cutout, and we want it to be Poyomi Tune Transparent. 
So transparent stuff is meant to have Z write off. And if you're having issues with transparent things, hiding things behind them, or sort of just like cutting holes into stuff, you either have to turn your Z write off or increase your render queue so that it renders on top of things and not with them. And that is Z write. So Z bias is sort of something that you'll almost never need to use. It makes it so that things are sort of pushed closer to the camera when they're rendered to the Z buffer. So as I increase the Z buff or the Z bias, it's actually pushing that sphere away and it thinks it's behind the grass. Now if I make this negative, you'll see it actually starts to render in front of this because we've actually created a bias that makes it think that it's even closer to the camera than this wall right here. This is useful when you have like minor clipping. So like say you have your clothes and they're, they're kind of clipping with something else and you kind of just, you want that something else to always be on, on top of your clothes no matter what. You can actually just give it a gentle Z bias and it will always appear on top of it, but this can create other issues. So be careful with this. Don't just crank it up for no reason. Use it appropriately or don't use it at all. And that covers miscellaneous settings. If you have any trouble with this or anything else, I'll leave a link to my Discord in the description below. Feel free to join, and thank you for watching.